Oh, hey, Cynthia, I goofed. I goofed. Hang okay. on. You think I've done this enough? Sorry. Um, That's okay. I, I just got us started. So my bad. Let me. Okay. Sorry about that. Let's That's okay. try this one more time. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Sorry for the delay. I had a little technical difficulty there on my end. That's my bad. Um, thank you for joining us today um, on our first Agent Insights series. This is our first webinar in a series that we're going to be doing. And we have Cynthia Yosha Snyder from our Meridian North office with us today. And I asked Cynthia to join us. She has a really great um, story. She started, you know, kind of from when she started, it could, I think, lend a lot of insight for those of you that are just now getting started in this business and trying to figure out um, what this is going to look like and how we're going to make things happen in sort of a unique environment. Or if you've been in the business for a while and you're and you're feeling a little stagnant or you're a little worried about what this future is going to look like, Cynthia has a really great uh, story to share. And so I asked her to join us today. A couple quick housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, there is a wonderful handout um, that Cynthia's daughter, Olivia, put together for her, and it goes into a lot of detail as far as what Cynthia is going to cover today. So definitely check that out. I would suggest downloading it right from the handout section, um, and we can also send that out after today's call. And then just another quick uh, note, you are all muted. But we want to keep this as interactive as possible. So locate your question pane on uh, the GoToWebinar sort of control panel and type any questions that you have in there. And Victoria is going to be monitoring for the monitoring those for us, and she will jump in and will keep this as interactive as possible. So with that, take two, Cynthia. I'm kicking it over <laughs> to you now. It's all good. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is doing well um, through these very unique times. I know that Christy and I were talking earlier. There's some amazing things that are coming out of this as well. So I hope you are all doing well. Um, I wanted to share a little bit of how I began in real estate. Um, and, and if you'll indulge me and let me do that, I would appreciate it. So I started in 2010. And if you think back on 2010, we were coming, we were in the midst of the economic downturn and was probably one of the worst times to start, maybe not the worst, but definitely one of them. Um, and I was an avid volunteer before I became into real estate and a stay at home mom. And I had shared North Central's open house. And if you um, know, knew Carol Robinson, her daughter-in-law told me that she was going to take the real estate class. So it began the day after I finished the open house and I took it. She bailed on me because she was going to miss too many days and you weren't allowed to miss any days. And so thinking I was just going to entertain myself for a period of time by getting some education, had no interest in starting um, a career. When I met with Lynn Davis, she changed everything for me and said, you need to be doing this. So I gave myself a year to do it. My husband and I chatted and we decided that I'm gonna try it for a year, I'm gonna put all in. And I came to the office every day, I um, learned things, I read things. Um, the environment at the Meridian North office wasn't, um, I would not say it was thriving because most agents were saying, I, I never had to call people before. I never had to do these things before. They called me and now I'm having to do all these different things. And so it was a very negative environment. So thanks to Craig Fletchall and um, some other agents who were positive, I was able to stay in. I came into the office every Monday through Friday. I treated it like a job. It took me about um, seven or eight months to have my first listing which if you think back on that timing as well, my first listing was $725,000, which nobody was really buying $725,000 houses at that time. Um, it happened to have been Cash Shookman's home, who is now on my team, um, which I'm honored to have her be a part of that. But then finally, my first came, sale came through after 11 months at an open house. Um, due to my knowledge of North Central and Washington Township in general, I was able to acquire that buyer and we wrote an offer. I remember sitting at the table going over everything and they said to me, okay, who do we write the earnest money check out to? 
And I totally blanked out. I'd made it all the way through that time, not telling them anything that this was my first sale, nothing. And I said, um, excuse me for a minute. I'll be right back. I ran into a closet and I called Craig Fletchall and I said, who do they make the earnest money check out to? Because I had no clue. So you fumble through some of your mistakes and I now know who it gets made out to and I would never forget that any longer. But that's how I started. And I remember early on some of the things that our company laid the groundwork for as to what um, we are today after over a hundred years. And one of the couple of the things that are on the screen now are those things that really have stayed true to me. Um, always have thought what Jim Litton has expressed to us continuously about attitude and activity is what equals success. We can sit around and complain about things, complain about the times that we're going through right now. And if we sit around and do nothing, there won't be any success. But if we have a positive attitude and see how can I come out of this in something that is bright and cheerful and I do something about it, I think that we, you will find many successes from that. And Fred Tucker, if you've read his book, many, he's done so many wonderful things um, to, to create the company that we've navigated into. And so these are some of my most important quotes that I kind of live by, and especially as being part of the Tucker Company. Let's see. So I really love that. Just going to jump in really quick because I know some of you are a total lifelong learner. And I think the Fred Tucker quote totally kind of sums up who you are as far as, you know, getting a lot of the information that you need before you almost, you know, jump in the deep end, so to speak. And that sort of takes us to this next section of what to focus on and the knowledge you need to work on, whether it's a brand new interesting market and we're navigating Zoom and virtual stuff, or if you're brand new. Absolutely. So one, one of the things, so I'm going to tell another quick story. Um, I never knew I was a learner, to be very honest. Um, I've taken the, the strengths, um, and I know my 34 strengths, and one of my top five strengths is learner. And if you would have told me that early on in my life, I would have said, uh-uh, because I went down to IU, and um, I had so many friends, and I thought I could study at a college level the same that I had studied in high school. And my second year, IU said, study harder or leave. And I said, goodbye. <laughs> I didn't feel that I could study any longer in that environment. It was too big for me. I knew too many people and I just couldn't, I just didn't start right. So I finished my degree at Butler, um, but knowledge, I didn't realize that I, that that was what I had thought and I was too far the eight ball in college. So I try to stay, I learned from that and try to stay ahead of it. And I think those 11 months, that I was learning before I had anything. I was holding open houses, doing all of that. But while I was learning, that is what gave me the confidence to be able to do all the things, obviously not knowing where an earnest money check was written, but all the other things I felt really confident because I navigated through that entire transaction with them until the moment that I had to answer the question about the earnest money, they had no clue and said they would never have assumed that that was my first transaction ever. And so doing the things that you're seeing up on that screen, whether it was education, whether it's for continuing education or anything else, getting educated, getting knowledge gives you that comfort and then you're perfectly capable of going out and answering any questions that they have and always know that if you don't know the answer, go find it. I didn't know the answer. So I called Craig and found out what the answer was. One of my other favorite things that a very dear friend did for me is she said in 2010, I am not ready to buy, but I love looking at houses. Would you go look at houses with me? And my answer at first was, of course I will. But I also shared, asked her if she would do me a favor. And I said, can I set you up on searches? Can I act like we're we are selling your house? Can we go do, can I treat you the same as a buyer and a seller and learn from you from that experience of doing it? And the pressure, let alone that she was my dear friend, but the pressure of the fact that I knew that we weren't really having to do it, that I could learn all the goods and the bads was the greatest gift that my friend could have given me. Last year, we did sell her house and she bought a new house. Um, and I learned again, even from that as well. So, but that 
practice that she gave me early on in my career was so helpful. I try to encourage as many people who are new to find someone who will partner with you. If that isn't a friend, it can be a spouse. If you need somebody else, give me a call. I'm sure your manager would do it or anybody else or another new person and let them navigate through it as well. Staying current, in my opinion, is one of the most important things that you can do. And not only staying current, but staying local. So there are many things that are going to happen in nationally that we're going to hear about on the news. And then we then then not necessarily us, but the people who are listening to it think that that's the, the golden thing, that that is the gospel and that that's the way that it happens here. So back in 2010 and 2011, 2012, when we were going through all those foreclosures, yes, we had foreclosures here. I don't want to say that we didn't have them, but we certainly, our economy did not tank here like they did in California's, in Las Vegas, in some of those areas where they got really hit hard. We didn't have that here. And so we, we needed to be able to convey to our clients, to our potential clients, that some of the things that they're hearing nationally are not necessarily things that are what's going on locally here. I'm a big fan of Keeping Current Matters. If you aren't aware of Keeping Current Matters, I highly suggest you consider trying a 14-day trial. What I love about Steve Harney, I met him at Leading RE um, at a conference that I went to probably in 2011, 2012, 2013, somewhere early on. Uh, I believe Joe Monaman went, Donna came. It was a wonderful, wonderful event, but I met Steve Harney there. And this company, what he has done is he takes information from the Mortgage Bankers Association, from economists, from NAR, and he takes all that information and he puts it into some beautiful slides that you can use as slides. But you also, it, even if you only used it to gain the knowledge from all that, he does a webinar once a, uh, once a month, I believe, and he talks about all these. So he gives you all the tools so that you can use them um, in educating yourself or educating your clients. So those are my, definitely some of my important things about gaining knowledge. I absolutely love that. And just a quick Spoiler alert for anybody on this call, we have an exciting new um, technology that we're going to be rolling out in the next couple weeks that's going to help you guys sort of in tandem with like what Cynthia is talking about, um, the market watch that Jim Litton writes, but it's also going to help you guys drill down to specific data in specific neighborhoods, cities, markets around Indiana so you can, again, be better armed to talk to people, especially in this tough time where they're thinking, oh my gosh, there's no way I want to sell my house right now. Well, actually sales in, let's just use Carmel for example, are up over this time last year. So it's really still not a bad time necessarily uh, to sell. So that's gonna be something that's coming out soon. So get excited for that and you guys heard it here first. Yeah. So when Christy first, when we first talked about this, um, out of our conversation came up with um, successes and failures. And as I look back over my last 10 years, um, I have, and I'm sure we'll be going over many of those, but one of my mistakes has also been a positive, but one of my mistakes is that I've focused on possibly learning too much, too many things. And if you see my, um, you know, my name and my, with, it has all of my designations, that's about half of my designations. And I am not encouraging anybody to do that. That was a necessity for my personality, for, for me, for my strengths. Um, but learn something, learn something, become the expert on that something. I am a fan of taking one to three buckets and picking those things that are important to you to, that, that you um, feel drawn to. So if that's downsizing, if that's seniors, if that's condos, if that's a specific neighborhood, if that's luxury or just buyers or just sellers, whatever it is, pick that, learn what you can about it, become that expert, learn about all, set yourself up on searches on all of the different areas that fulfill what it is that you want to become an expert at, know it, learn it, own it, and be good at it. Don't start the next bucket until you've perfected bucket one. And they usually tell you to have 
three buckets. Um, that too many more than those buckets, you kind of get watered down. Um, so own those three buckets until you have all of them super solidified in being successful. And then if you want to add something, add something else. But truly just fill those buckets with the areas that you are want to be successful at and be really, really good at it. So that was one of my failures and one of my successes. I think the fact that I do have so many designations, I'm able to um, communicate with my clients um, on lots of different levels, but there's no reason that, that it ha needs to be that way. As a matter of fact, I would say that it's a little bit of a negative or a failure on that part, um, even though it was just driven in me and who I am. And Cynthia, do you have any suggestions um I know we've got some newer folks on the call. Like, where would you start? Like, where should they, if they're sort of new in this, what's a good, I, I'm not asking the question very well, no, but no, I how should they focus at the beginning and figure yes. out what those three buckets or those three areas yeah. are that they should hone yeah. in on? And, and I appreciate the order that you have here, but it's a little bit about what we're going to talk a little bit later on, I think, if you have it in there, where I have in my handout that talks about um, I believe there's three things. The, the absolute most important thing is one of your buckets is going to be your sphere. Those are the people you who already know, like, and trust you no matter what you did before today or before you started real estate. Start creating them. I, rely on your mom, but don't rely on your mom too much because sometimes family can be the worst to work with. I don't say that they always are, but sometimes that can be a little more difficult. But the that's that bucket, one of your buckets should always be your sphere. And so I am a huge fan of Michael Mayer. I, I don't know if anybody here or if, if Christy or if you promote Michael Mayer, but I am a huge fan. He is in the packet that I gave you. Um, <clears throat> he wrote a book about when I started. So I don't know if it was 2009, 2010. He wrote a book um, called 7L, The Seven Levels of Communication. And what I love about how he tells you to create your database of the people you already know is spot on. So your sphere is one bucket. That is your first one. Your second one is going to be kind of a little bit what you're drawn to. And there are some things in the packet that I have as a handout that tell you how to create your database. Um, Michael Mayer does it based off of a movie theater. If you are inviting people who are you want to market to, who you want to, who you feel are kind of in your corner, you can only invite 25 people because that's all the movie theater will hold. Put down your top 25 people. Put them down, write them on a piece of paper. I get <clears throat> technology is amazing. And if you're, you know, uh, more of a millennial and you want to only do things, but there's something beautiful about writing it on a piece of paper and keeping things in a binder. And when we get to the CRM section, you'll see some information about how I do it. I did not keep a database until last year and I still stink at it. One of my big, that is without a doubt my biggest failure. Your database needs to be the most precious thing you take care of. Because even if your database is only 25 people, if you get 10 of those people to either refer you to somebody or to bring you direct business, that's a lot of sales just right there, even just out of 25 you will continue to add on to that in increments of 25 up to 150. I always thought my database needed to be huge. So I thought that's too overwhelming for me. I'll do that tomorrow. Well, if you know anything about Spanish, my grandmother always used to tell me mañana, which means tomorrow. But that tomorrow never really comes. It's tomorrow and then tomorrow and then tomorrow. And so that's the way I dealt with my database is, oh, well, I need to sit down and see how big I can make it. Take it down, narrow it to 25 people, get that done. Then add 25 and then create that pattern. And that's what it says in the, the handout that I have about how you do that. So perfect that one. As for determining your other buckets that you're going to do, that's a little bit about who you are and who you want to work with. If you are someone who doesn't want to get 
and obviously we're not getting in cars today and taking people around, we're meeting them. But if you are not someone who wants to go show possibly 25 or 30 or even more houses to one buyer before they decide which house they want, don't be a buyer's agent. Because if that's something that bothers you, then that's not what you want to be. You can take on a few buyers here and there, but that's not gonna be your bucket that you're going to perfect. So a little bit of it is determining who you are. Get on to NAR and find out all the different designations that they have. There are so many others than what NAR offers. I am also a CRS and encourage you to get on CRS. And if you wanna learn a lot about that, that has a very broad um, opportunity for designations that you can get lots of things, but they have lots of designations. So do a little bit of digging, digging not only in yourself as to who you are and who you want to work with, but go into places like NAR. Christy, I'm sure can help you with other things that would be um, areas that you want to determine, maybe utilizing your strengths to determine which one you're going to be the best at. So it's a little bit personal when it comes to what your next bucket, but A number one is your sphere. I love that. And if anyone wants another suggestion on some places to find some designations, um, because of our affiliation with Leading RE, there are some really great ones on the online uh, learning center that you can access through the toolbox. That's the picture on the toolbox when you first log in that looks like the globe and there's a whole bunch under there and the cool thing about that is once you complete those designations um, we will add those almost it kind of looks like a banner or a widget onto your Tucker uh, agent website. Um, so that can kind of help you, again, gain knowledge, gain some expertise, and then also be able to advertise that, hey, I am an expert in this. So check that section out as well. And those are free, which is awesome. Everyone loves free, right? That's great. So, because of one of my strengths being a learner, I'm constantly doing something. So I really don't even go to the grocery store without, and I don't go to the grocery store that much anymore, but I really don't go anywhere without putting an audible podcast, uh, an audible book on or a podcast something. I am almost always have a headset in that I am learning. I mean, there's sometimes people are talking to me and they think I'm rude that I'm ignoring them, but it's because I've got something chirping in my ears that's coming off my phone. Um, I, that is, that's who I am. Um, there are amazing podcasts out there now um, that are about real estate, that are about anything. Learn how to keep calm. One of my biggest things is that I said that I have adult realtor ADD, because I'm flipping from one thing to another and constantly going to all these different things. And I have Calm is one of my favorite apps. And I just put on Calm and I'll listen to the, to the instruments or the rain dropping or whatever it might be, but find whatever it is that fulfills because it's so easy and it's mostly free. And even if you're going to use Audible, it's, you know, it, it's fairly reasonable, the cost of a book or even less than it, depending on how you join. Um, as for some of the real estate experts that I follow, although there are wonderful ones, and I think Leading RE is a great place because that's how I found Steve Harney was through Leading RE, but some of the big ones who are doing a great job of getting stuff out there, although there are plenty, Michael Mayer is doing an amazing job right now. He had a podcast that he did, I think over a hundred sessions before COVID hit, and then he's doing a daily dose. Um, and I'm not certain how much longer it's gonna be. It was going all through the month of April and I'm not certain if he's going to continue it into May since our circumstances are continuing, but I am a big fan of Michael Mayer. I think that Tom Ferry has, <laughs> a Tom Ferry puts out some great content as long as it's really from Tom Ferry. I'm not, I, some of his coaches, I haven't found as much enlightenment from, but Tom Ferry does a really good job and he's a really good teacher, how he explains things. And I love how excited that he gets when he does it. One of the other things is local realtors who are here in the Indianapolis area. And when I say that, it's all of my bore area. Who else is doing something that you want to emulate? Not yet, but take them to coffee, take them to lunch, 
ask them for a Zoom call, whatever, and then send them a gift card if they, you know, if they'll do it. But reach out to somebody who is running their business the way you want to run your business and pick their brain and pick and choose the things that you learn from them as to how you can incorporate it into the realtor you want to be. Is that, oh, Remington Ramsey. I can't leave Remington Ramsey out. Did I lose you? Yeah, no, he's great. Yeah, he's got okay. his Thursday, well, Thursday at 10, right, Cynthia? Um, did you lose my picture? Because I got to figure out how to get you back. There we go. There we go. Sorry, someone called and it came through on my computer because my phone and computer are close by. So I apologize. No Can worries. I that question again about Remington. Oh, yeah, I just said he yeah, I agree with Remington. Um, his stuff is Thursday at 10. He's usually been going live on Facebook. And then he's also got a zoom call. But yeah, well, uh, he he does some really great. And stuff. if you sign up on he's gone, I think he's gone live on Facebook a couple of other time, like intermittent times, you can sign up to have it be alerted to you. If when he goes live, so pick and choose, or you're going to be getting alerts all the time as to who you want to do that with. But Remington is he he's killing it locally, in my opinion. And of course, he's had our wonderful Jim Litton on several times. So yes, absolutely. Awesome. Hey, Victoria, do we have any other questions that have come in so far? Uh, no, we're good for you guys to keep going. Awesome. All right, Dad, here we are, Cynthia. <laughs> I did move some stuff around for you. <laughs> so um, your, your database, as I already said, is A number one. I also, in the handout, you'll see more details about what I'm suggesting with that. I do not care. I I know I'm probably going to say this probably five more times throughout this conversation that we're going to have together. Your database is absolutely a number one, not the ads that you're going to take out, not the, any, any other amount of money that you are going to spend. Your database is the most important thing and my biggest failure. Make certain that whether you use Tucker's website, which is free, I mean, CRM, whether you use a piece of paper, which I happen to use, I use went back to a little bit the old fashioned way, and I have a piece of paper that has a handful of questions on it that I try to fill out about so that I remember that their daughter is a junior in high school and you know, then I'm, that it's the next year and then I'm talking to them and I'm like, oh, is she graduating from high school? Where is she going to college or what are her next plans? Keeping all those detailed notes for me, probably a little bit because of my age, paper is better. I have an ABC indexed notebook and I have sheets that I put in there and then I put them into the Tucker CRM. I'm not so good at that part, by the way, but I'm getting that's my goal is to get better on that. But do whatever it is that you will use, but why not start with Tucker CRM? Christy has done an amazing job with all of the things that she, tools that she's put in there that allow you to communicate and drip on your clients um, or not drip, however you wanna do it, but that the systems are all there that she has in place for that. So CRM, A number one. What you can set up with your CRM is when you're gonna call those people and truly what you should have in your the system that you're gonna create is I'm calling this many people every day. And that goes into your everyday morning thing that you do. And whether that's one person a day or five people a day, I don't care, pick it and stay consistent with it. But your system that you create in your database should alert you as to who you're supposed to call and you can even put notes in there and it'll tell you what you spoke about last time. But really at the end of the day, it's Ford. It is family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. And just come up with things to talk about them. What I can promise you, they will ask you about real estate. Have something in your, in your back pocket as to what you're gonna say or be able to answer their question. You can always ask them, do you have a real estate need? Do you know anyone who has a real estate need? But know that that's not the focus of your conversation. The focus of your conversation is to check in on them. The other thing that I would say is systems. I did not do a great job of staying consistent with my systems. I have them, but they're 90% in my head and that's not a good place to keep them. So get them into a binder, into anything that you have, this is what I do. 
Um, I know that many of the managers, I know Angela has done a fantastic job of creating um, a buyer and a seller steps as to what you do. I would assume that most managers are doing that in the Tucker company. Um, if not, come on over to the Meridian North office. No, I should, I did not say that. So don't, don't, don't put that in the notes, but I did not go, but I know Angela has it. Ask your manager for it. Ask your manager to create something for you and help you navigate through all the steps that you need to do from one to the end of the transaction. And then also I know that they put together, I believe on NAR, there are, there's a list of 183 things, I think, that NAR says that you do in one transaction. Grab that, create your system, use dot loop, use the tools that Christy has put together and that all of our company has put together in order to create, create that. But while you have a little bit of a pause right now, and whether that pause is now or that pause is in December and January's or whenever that moment is, Remember to figure out how you can improve your system. Every year I analyze my system, but I am updating it and putting it all into um, actual notes and actually in it's in drive actually for me. And it has exactly what to do. Here's my next step. Sometimes you're skipping a step depending on the situation, but create those systems during this time. And I'm sure Christy probably has even other things that are she has available to those people who are in LEAP or other things like that. But those three things are so important. Database, connect with the people in your database. And when I say connect, that is not a mass email. That does not even count as a connection. This is a text and take a picture when you're driving by somebody's house who's in your sphere, take a picture. So even right now, tulips are out. Your tulips are looking amazing. It was so nice to drive by your house. Hope all is well in a text if you want. Doesn't have to always be a pick up the phone or a face to face, but connect with your people in something that is not massively distributed to easily just put, press send. Yeah, I love that. And just um, piggybacking on what you said about some systems, Cynthia, uh, also in the Tucker CRM, we have a lot of that built out for you. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, in my business, I don't necessarily let the CRM system just run, but I pull a lot of that information. We have emails pre-written for you. We have a ton of content in there for you if you're newer to see what you know, what all the different steps are and to figure out maybe what your own system is, how you want to run your business. But even at minimum, if you're, you know, we're, we're sending the same information sometimes over and over, hey, your closing's coming up next week, or here's what you need to do, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, to prepare for the home inspection. A lot of that is pre-written for you, so you don't have to recreate the wheel. You just have to change a couple key pieces of information and send it. And that's the kind of stuff that will make your life so much simpler or easier, I guess, you know, when you are doing a lot more transactions, like at the point where Cynthia is right now in her business, you don't have to think about it and rewrite that email every single time, for example. Um, and then one other thing that you said that I wanted to, I've said this on another call because it really resonated with me, um, talking, going back to Ford for a second, family, occupation, recreation dreams, when you're thinking of things, if you, if you need sort of a guideline or a roadmap of what to, what to talk to people about, I was on a leading RE conference call a couple of weeks ago and Larry Kendall was running that call and he is the creator of Ninja Selling. If you don't know who Larry is, but he's a great, great guy, really cool selling system. But he said, and I love this for right now, I think it is so impactful. He said his favorite Ford question right now when he's been reaching out to people is, what it's kind of going into the d or dreams you know what is what do you dream about doing with when this is all over what's the first thing you're going to do when the quarantine lifts or when you go back to work what's the first thing that's going to happen or what's the first trip you're going to take so i really love that as, as kind of that d question it, people are are they are dreaming they're ready they're thinking about what the next chapter is going to be so um do not underestimate the power of ford had a question for you, Cynthia. Um, I know you're a big networker and volunteer and really great at getting face to face with people right now where, you know, networking groups are not meeting physically and it's harder to volunteer because you can't, you know, we're trying to socially distance all that good stuff. Have you seen anything um, that's been successful as far as still connecting with those folks in meaningful ways when we're not able to be in the same room with them or, or what have you, anything, any insight there? 
Absolutely. So I have played um, Euchre with a group of girl ladies. Um, there's eight of us for the last 32 years, which means that I learned when I was one and have been playing with them for since then. But no, we've been playing for 32 years. About every other week, we are doing a Zoom call and we have a drink or we have dinner or like we're doing it tomorrow at 4.30, um, which is maybe a little early for me to have a cocktail, but nonetheless, we're doing it. We just share things, we just stay connected. So that is one thing, Zoom is free. Um, you don't have to be a paid member to do that. So you can easily get on and Zoom with some friends. I could see how that it could maybe even transcend into Zooming with some of your um, vendors possibly. How are they doing? Checking in with them too. Get a plumber, a, you know, all those different things and create something as to how you're gonna stay connected with your vendors if you wish. The other thing that I have done is that I am as well, have, am still making donations. I happen to have had some Girl Scout cookies um, for an event that I had to cancel. And I had a hundred boxes that I bought from a client of mine. And I, my, a dear friend of mine is an ER doctor at St. Vincent. And I, I texted him and I said, I, I have these Girl Scout cookies. Is that something that this was maybe that within days of when we, it was even before I think we were in stay at home mode. It was just beginning ready to, you know, the rumors were there. And so he said, oh my goodness, we would love Girl Scout cookies. So I shipped a bucket of Girl Scout cookies, we weren't allowed to come onto the St. Vincent um, property. They, he didn't want us to. So we dropped it off at the end of his driveway and he came and picked it up and they sent me pictures. He posted it on social media. Um, you know, our healthcare workers are, you know, we all might be going stir crazy in our homes and, and not being able to get out and do things into our offices and open houses and do normal things. But our healthcare workers are working overtime. So whereas we need to embrace the fact that we're able to kind of have, you know, this moment to pause, they haven't paused, they've escalated. And I know a lot of the restaurants have joined in and are donating um, meals to the to the ERs and all of the different medical care people. I have a doctor's office that I sent lasagnas to, um, and I've done that with several of my clients. So for about a less than a $30 investment, I've sent out probably 30, so it's not that much, but it is more than, but if you're taking them for a meal, I'm sending them a lasagna and um, I just text them the different flavors. They tell me what they want and I drop it off at their front porch. It's made in a business scenario. It is a business. So, you know, it's not like it was made in my home. And that is another way that I'm staying in touch with my A plus people um, and connecting with them. But even as though I also serve on a couple of boards. So we are Zooming um, on a regular basis with them as well. And so that still keeps me connected with those. But as for possibly even dropping something, you know, it doesn't have to be Girl Scout cookies, but even at the fire departments, even at some of those places. And then if you are so inclined and a social media person, then take a picture of it and just say, just, you know, dropped off X and, um, and so grateful for, you know, them protecting us, whatever your phrasing might be. But therein lies, one way that you can do it for right now, but look into how you can figure out your plan. Even if you aren't able to physically do it right now, come up with your plan as to what you're going to do when we are able to do more things. Um, I know that I went and got, you know, my mother was having a craving for a milkshake, so I went and got her a milkshake. I tipped probably three times what I normally would um, on just getting a milkshake. So just doing those things that you can, it doesn't have to involve a lot of money, but it can involve something. So that's those are some of my things as to how I'm staying um, still involved with giving back. But having that plan for when we're on the other end of this as to where you feel connected, that you can join in. Um, I do know that my temple also is, is delivering groceries and meals for people. So it possibly, you know, some your religious location or someplace like that that you can do and be involved with that would be helpful. 
Awesome, thank you. And just one more quick follow up question. You are the queen of handwritten notes um, and I applaud you for that. How many do you do in a week? So I try to do five a day. I've gotten a little lax recently. Um, I did go and steal all my stuff from the office and um, have done that. But my goal is to do five a day. Um, so I think in this paperwork that I did, I said somewhere between five and 20. I'm not sure what my exact range was. What I think that is the most important about it is to be consistent. And I think I learned a lot of that from Joan Lahneman, let alone Michael Mayer. He's big on that as well. But Joan Lahneman is so good at it. And um, Michael Mayer has a um, podcast that he did with the guy who, and I'm not going to come up with his name, but the guy who did 365 notes, he maybe did more than that, but he did notes every single day. And if he didn't, his deal was is that he had written a checkout for $1,000. And if he didn't write five every day before midnight, then he had to deliver that $1,000 donation check to his charity. So it was pretty rigid but he would write them to, and this is what the beauty of what this man said, is that if he was in on an airplane and the, the, the um, flight attendant was, you know, he connected with that person a little bit out of the ordinary, he would write it to a flight attendant, um, to, to your Starbucks barista, which we're not getting ready to, you know, able to do any of that. But you get the idea is that he was trying to spread it past just his intimate sphere of people because he wanted to to be kind and to let them know, know that he was grateful for knowing them and meeting them. And I think that if you take whatever avenue that you want, the the most important thing is that you are consistent with it. So pick your number. If one is all you can do a day, then do one. Um, if it's five a week and you want to do all five on one day, then do it. But whatever it is, pick it, own it, and stay with it. I'm also big on doing, like if I send postcards out, I'm big on doing the postcard and having marketing create that, but then I'll write a little note next to it so that they know that I've recognized that Susie or John or whoever it's going to, that it's going to that, you know, that they've, that it hasn't just been, again, a mass thing that I'm sending out. Love that. Thank you. I feel like that time went really fast, Cynthia. What questions do we have, Victoria? Take a minute, type them in. Um, um, we had some really great, great questions come in from Jim Anthony and Cynthia. Um, he has also dubbed himself the president of your fan club and would like to know if he can get one of those lasagnas. I would be happy to send him a lasagna. And he is one of my absolute favorite people. And for sure, when I make that comment about who you learn from someone that you want to emulate, I don't know that I want to run a team the way, you know, the, because Jim's so good at it. I'm not that good of a teacher. I'm really not. I'm a good learner, but I'm not that great of a teacher necessarily. Jim is awesome. And without a doubt, one of my absolute favorite, favorite people. Well, um, he, he pointed out that you're a past Bud Tucker Award winner, um, and he kind of wanted to know a little bit more about your philosophy on giving back, paying your civic rent. I feel like you touched on a little bit of that, um, but he also pointed out that you are a Giving Circle Committee member, and maybe if you wanted to talk about any of that, or maybe about any life lessons, wisdom from parents, grandparents that sort of give you um, your perspective on those types of things of giving back or successes that you've had, um, maybe not only in your business, but in life too. That was a, yeah, a loaded question, but. It, it is, it's all good. And and Jim Anthony as well is a Bud Tucker recipient and so incredibly well-deserved. He, he does so many things in so many arenas and he's passionate about those things. And I think that's probably one of the most important things is that don't say, oh, well, because this is important, you know, this is something that other people are doing. I'm going to go do this. Have a reason that you pick something that you're passionate about. It makes it a lot easier to do it. Um, so I will have to start by telling you that I learned to be philanthropic and volunteer esque from my parents. Um, they, they always did it. My mom was always doing something, whether that was helping in the classroom when I was a kid or whether they were having events in our homes. Um, my parents taught me, um, that 
we had to give back that it was and and i think judaism tells me that as well and and i think most religions do i do not think that there's anything special or unique about judaism it's just that the torah commands us basically to make this imperfect world god left us this world that is not perfect and he said okay now it's your turn go help and i think it not only does it make us feel better, but it's a little bit of our obligation to take care of those who are not as capable of taking care of themselves. So find that place that you feel good about being a part of and do that. But for sure, I, 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 I'm honored to have won the Bud Tucker Award and I've done many of things. I, I, you know, but what I have to say in general, there, just because I won Bud Tucker and respectfully because Jim did and Kelly Todd and all the different um, Tucker employee recipients of that we all do good things we all do good things and there are good things in our world you just need to find something and go do it and be a part of that and but my parents are the ones who started that for me um, and i've never known how not to do it that's why everybody says how are you on so many boards and still a multi-million dollar producer I guess I, I do sleep, so it's not because of that. I do hang out with my family, so it's not that. It's just I find a way to get those things into my everyday because they are what makes me feel good about me and makes me enjoy each thing that each day that I do because I, whether I've raised money, whether I have donated cookies or delivered a lasagna to Jim Anthony for being the head of my fan club, which he doesn't even have to do that. I'm gonna send him a lasagna, anyone that he wants. Um, and I hope you're he healing well, Jim. But if I think I answered Victoria all that he asked, I think you just have to find, it can be your church, but if it's not, find another organization that does something that you do. I'm a part of Best Buddies. I have a nephew who has Down syndrome and we have done Best Buddies. I am um, the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. I had a young friend, um, I'm friends with his parents, but just prior to his 21st birthday, he was um, diagnosed with leukemia. And so I campaigned for him and raised $74,000 in 10 weeks. I didn't have that as a plan. My plan was $25,000. So you just do it and, and, and find it. It wasn't really the goal for that. It was that I had a friend who was going through something and I said, I can go clean their house. I can do these things, but the best thing I can do is find a cure. And the only way that I can do that is to provide money. So that's what drove me for that situation. So just look inside, just be a part of something. Um, I think most of us do volunteering. I just happen to do too much of it. That's really fantastic, Cynthia. Um, I had another question, maybe to kind of go off of all of that. Um, when you have a down moment, everybody has a down moment, how do you work your way out of that? Whether so, it's business yeah. or you know emotionally or, or kind of encompassing all of that. Absolutely, Victoria. And I, it's in the packet that, that I do need to give amazing kudos to my daughter, Olivia. She runs almost all of my social media except my personal stuff. She's a part of my website. She does the blogging and everything. She lives in Colorado Springs and she's the one who put together the handout um, that I gave better the information, but she put it together. But one of my things that is in there that I talk about is that I allow myself 24 hours. So I, <laughs> actually won an award for the Meridian North office of the worst transaction for 2019. That was me. I sold the same house three times. Um, and only because two of the transactions fell apart. And I gave myself 24 hours to mope, to say some foul words and to determine what did I do wrong? Did I do anything wrong? Um, I may, you maybe aren't doing anything wrong, but if you've done something wrong, then you learn from it. I have done other things wrong. Forgot to change a seller's disclosure on the BLC when we learned something um, and it ended up being a mistake. There are things, we are gonna make mistakes, but own it, learn from it, and by all means move on. So 24 hours is my thing. And I can't remember if I need to be giving Craig Fletch all that credit, but somebody early on gave me that 24 hours. That's it. Because even in what we're going through today, 
You could say, oh my gosh, I was going to expect to have all this business this spring and then I don't. And so what am I going to do? So put implement some of the things that I've said or some of what of the other amazing agents that are in the Tucker company that Christy is going to be sharing their things with. Find something, do something. One of my big things that I have always done is I do something real estate oriented every single day. That is seven days a week. Because in my opinion, in this career that we have chosen, real estate doesn't really stop. Now, I don't want anybody calling me at two o'clock in the morning, um, but I, I do something that is connected to my career every day. And maybe that's listening to a podcast. Um, whatever that may be, I do something every single day to further myself. And whether that's showing houses, open houses, going to open houses, looking online, whatever it may be, I do something every day. But my big rule on when you make a mistake is 24 hours and move on. I really love that outlook. I, I think I might need to adopt that 24 <laughs> hours. You can mope for 24 and then on to the next thing. You can because otherwise it can be like a cancer. It can, it can just fester and fester and keep on going. So get rid of it. Awesome. Well, I don't see any other questions that have come in, um, but Craig says, great job, Cynthia, good info. Um, your teammate, Cass, says uh, you're an amazing teacher and role model. Lynn Davis also said she's honored and proud that you are with Tucker. Um, yeah. So unless, I've got some thank yous as well. Unless we have anything else, I, that's all that I see here, Christy. Excellent. Well, Cynthia, I really want to thank you for kicking this off. You embody so much of what we are at the Tucker Company. And one of my favorite things is that so many of our agents are just so happy to share and, and give insight on what's worked for them, what hasn't worked for them, and be candid about, I screwed up, <laughs> don't follow my lead. And I just really thank you for um, kind of opening your playbook, putting together an awesome handout. Definitely don't miss it, guys. It has tons of great information in it. Um, so thank you, Cynthia, for sort of kicking us off. Um, you rocked it and we appreciate you. Well, thank you so much. I'm so honored to have even been asked to be a part of this. And anybody who has any questions, please feel free to reach out to me, email or text. Um, whatever, I'd be happy to share anything else. And I think that that's one of the things I'm most grateful for is that over the last 10 years that you're exactly right, Christy, so many agents are so willing to share. There isn't anything that, you know, that I need to hoard. And truly everything I've done and everything I've created and do in my business, I've stolen from somebody else. So I'm very happy to share whatever it is that I'm doing and see if it can help anybody else. Awesome. Thank you. This has been recorded. So if anyone wants to go back and watch it later, I will be sending it out. Round of applause, Cynthia, you're a rock star. And I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of this gorgeous Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.